is the greenhouse going to be around forever as long as Tidal Gardens is a thing? The greenhouse is a, a definite challenge. Dan, this is going to be a hot take. I kind of like the greenhouse a little bit more than the, the other. Really? Yeah. We legit did not know how to make this work. We just dove right in. Hey Refilders, it's Remy and today I'm going to show you just a part of our little trip to Tidal Gardens. Don't mind the mess around me, lots of things going on, new tank going in, all of the things, so just bear with me. If you're like me and you're an OG fan fan, then your heart is probably still with the original greenhouse. I wanted to showcase this facility because this is where Tidal Gardens began. We'll get to the big fancy building next door soon, complete with gelato machine, but today we're gonna do a greenhouse update. Before we start, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know when we post new videos. Also ponder this question as you watch along and whenever you feel the need to comment, go ahead and comment your answer. What's the most surprising aspect of this coral farm for you? All right, let's head to Ohio. All right, well, we're here where Tidal Gardens began. Yes. We just dodged a rainstorm out there yeah. <laughs> to get in here. So you can kind of hear the rain in the background, but this is uh, this is where the whole story begins, right? It is. And this is a surprisingly old building. It was built in 2002. So yeah, like everything you see here, it's, it's improved over the years, but it is every bit of 20 years old at this point. Okay. Can you kind of take me on a, a little tour of uh, of the sure. green of the greenhouse? So, but this place is very much like a lab as far as like let's just see what works. We started with a lot of these sorts of tubs. These are like the Rubbermaid stock tanks. Yep. Dollar for dollar, they are just the least expensive thing. Like like this sort of thing for like the budget conscious coral farmer is like the gold standard. Again, these are all super, super duper old. But now that we have a little bit more like financial flexibility, one day I do want to convert all of this to, uh, to glass. However, there's so many corals growing here that we can't uh, just move the corals around and out of a system to fully break it down and build it back up in glass. Is the greenhouse going to be around forever as long as Tidal Gardens is a thing? Yeah, it is. So we, we do get asked quite a lot whether uh, if it makes sense to just focus on the new building, tear this one down. But I've got a lot of like sentimentality built up in this building in particular, because this building is what made it possible for me to leave a professional corporate life yeah. and become a farmer that does this. And I sure. noticed that you've, you've uh, upgraded all, most of the lighting is beyond that T5 level now. You had a bunch of the Amazon T5s and now you're back to... Yeah, the, the Amazon T5 surprisingly lasted a really long time. So when you have like a relatively inexpensive, uh, you know, like Chinese T5 fixture, it ain't gonna last forever, right? Yeah. Everything eventually dies in this greenhouse. It's a, it, it is a brutal environment, but they lasted like at least five years and as they fail, we are slowly replacing them with like some, some LEDs and, and occasionally we still use uh, T5 for stuff like photography. I do notice that there's, I mean, you've got a lot of coral in here. There is a ton. There's, there's arguably more coral in here right this second than yeah. there is in the new building. Like the new building is still filling up. This place is like maxed out. Yeah. For me, because I asked you what you were like, where you were before this. Uh huh thinking that it was in a garage or a basement or something like that. But you said this is the first thing. This is the first And this step. is kind of a big step to take right off the bat. Yeah, and and we legit did not know how to make this work. We just dove right in. The idea of the greenhouse is that you have like the perfect light on the perfect timer, but a greenhouse in Ohio, the consistency of the light is just not there. Like there's, I don't know, four times more light during the summer than the winter. And the photo period is like double in the summer. 
So you're never going to be able to keep SPS like Acropora. It'll never be happy. Yeah. Because there's it's constantly having to adjust to to sun light cycles. Clearly, it grows coral. Yeah. Like it, it's doing its job. So are, are you want to take us around to these systems at sure. all? I mean, they look identical for the most part. More or less, we do like dabble with like certain things because, like I said, we um, we try new things occasionally. Um, like like this one here, we still have one of those Amazon lights. And uh, again, when we're talking about labeling, again, we label like when these things are replaced. 2021, you guys. <laughs> I don't know if like, you guys heard the podcast. This is why we don't like go hard on the T5 because we don't replace our bulbs. <laughs> November 2021. I, I see. I see growing happy coral. That's what I see. <laughs> That's true too. Yeah. Like apparently it's overrated <laughs> to swap out T5 bulbs. Who knew, right? <laughs> uh, we've tried like algae scrubbers occasionally. Um, like algae scrubbing is one of those things that we we were messing with. Even in the early days, there's like a, a company that's no longer around called Inland Aquatics. Mm -hmm. That was, it was in Indiana like 20 something years ago. We had one of their original uh, algae scrubbers. It's the Eco Wheel? No, no, it's actually a dump bucket style. Oh, this thing has come and up so many by times. The way, and, and a friend of uh, the Reef Builders channel, Mark Vanderwaal. Mark, yeah. He bought my original one. Oh, okay. Way back 20 something years ago. He's like, you know, we've never met. But I think I bought a an, an original ATS from you. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I might have been one of the only people that ever had one. So we've yeah, been we've been trying to get him to set it back up on reef therapy oh, nice. and show us how they work and, and yeah. what that whole that lifestyle was, was about. Yeah. That's, that's so that's a small world, right? Small yeah. world. Yeah. We recently started to do calc waster in this building because uh we're getting so much like stony coral growth and we're tanking our um our ability to keep up with those macronutrients. So like our calcium and alkalinity and magnesium, we're like dip, dip, dipping. And so we finally decided we can't keep up with like doing the two part stuff in addition to our calcium reactor. The calcium reactors just aren't keeping up. Yeah. So we installed this entirely new Calcwasser system. Over next door, each of those systems has its own Calcwasser reservoir and has its own dosing pump for that. Here, we, we're kind of more space constrained. So we have a total of 5,000 gallon systems. So you have the five dosing pumps to a single Calcwasser reservoir. And basically this thing is gonna get drained every single day. We have to be ultra clear. We put like the, the recipes to, to make the calc on everything. We, it's thing after thing after thing. And ideally, yep, exactly. These guys are also labeled to, to which set they're going to as well. Okay. Are you stirring inside or is it is it just It's static. Okay, it's so you've static. got you're just you're basically not those those lines don't go all the way to the Correct. bottom. Correct. Okay. Yeah, they they stop short. And then once this guy's empty, we just take the entire lid swap it to the other one gotcha. and then we refill this one after we clean it gotcha. up. Gotcha. Oh, this is you got you've got some gorgs. Yes. Okay. These tanks in my opinion are too shallow. They're about 12 inches. And I'm, I'm thinking that 20 inches might be like the sweet spot. Yeah. But in the meantime, we are growing gorgs. This isn't something you often see in, in coral farms. It's gorgonians. The gorgonians, yeah. Yeah, and I wish that we could do like the more exotic, like non-photosynthetic ones, but we just can't. Yeah. So this is where um, our cooling system could be better. We are losing Stylophora like crazy in this tank and it happens suddenly. Okay. And I think it's because we've had like a, a number of multiple, like 90 plus degree days. And just the, the fact that this is like the, the, the upper tank, it's under a lot of T5 light. Um, we're, so I think that a, a lot of these guys are getting heat stressed right now. We're probably gonna have to like cut these guys up and get them into like cooler water systems. Yeah. Cause that's just one of those things where um, there's always room for improvement. Even after like 20 years of operation, this tank here is, was probably every bit of like 83, 84. And these guys are not happy. Dan, this is gonna be a hot take. Okay. I kind of like the greenhouse a little bit more than the, Do the you other. Really? Yeah. Really? I, what, what, I think what is it about it from a, like from a sheer, like just amount of corals, like in this building, it's just packed in here and it, everything just, I don't know. It just seems to 
maybe I like the more industrial look a little bit more. So it's um, funny that you say that because we had um, we had the Polar Reef guys over here. So like Andrew and them, yeah. they actually flew in and they spent way more time looking at corals in this building. Yeah. Because everything over next door is like a lot more organized and smaller. It's it's more for like hobbyist size stuff, right? Yeah. Whereas like they were looking for like monster sized pieces that, yeah. they, that they could take for their you get some birds. chunks in here. Yeah, I mean look, look at the like the, yeah, the, the plating the stuff. Monopora in here and But yeah, so like if you if you're into uh just like peeking around the corner and seeing like some hidden gems, it's going to happen in this building. Yeah. Not so much next door but always room for improvement there's we're always trying to do stuff a little bit better and anytime that, that there's a a new innovation that we're curious about we don't automatically set it up next door oftentimes it gets tested out here so a lot of new fixtures like lighting fixtures and stuff yeah. like that like algae stuff like i mentioned like um, we were messing with an algae scrubber over there this is an algae reactor that grows chato mm -hmm. we've been messing with stuff like that a lot of the again a lot of experimentation happens here and if devices can survive in this environment i know that they're actually tough yeah because this place is very unforgiving well i think this is one of the wonders of the reefing industry for sure not not just the greenhouse but also the building next door this whole operation um just want to say thanks for taking us oh, on a tour. You. And this better never come down, Than. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I do stand behind my hot take. Yes, the new building is amazing. It's awesome. But I don't know why the greenhouse will always have a piece of my heart. Let me know in the comments section, what was the most surprising thing about the greenhouse for you? Before you go, like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever we post new videos. Also, Reefstock Chattanooga is right around the corner. So if you're in the Chattanooga area, whether that be like Atlanta, Nashville, any of the Carolinas, you wanna come on over, make sure to go to reefstock.show and get your tickets now. Plenty more updates to come from down here in the basement, so that's coming up soon. Be on the lookout for that. So much to update you on, so much of the time. Thank you for hanging out, and I will see you in the next one.